Hello, Bright. Hello, church. Hello, brothers and sisters. Whoever is not from Bright just watching this, I want to uh, just greet you and share a little word, something that encouraged me personally a while ago. And hopefully this can encourage you. I'm going to read a little quick little passage. You probably heard it many times, but something caught my attention and I want to share that. So it's uh, in Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, the creation of the world, and start, starting from verse 16. And God made the two greater lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to, exp and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. So, um, I don't know if you guys caught this. I'm going to reread this again. Um, God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And then later on in verse 18, it says, to rule over the day and over the night. And I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but when I said, when I was reading this, the phrase, the greater light to rule the day makes sense, but the lesser light to rule the night kind of caught me off guard. And I said, hold on a second. That doesn't really make sense. Night is a time of darkness, isn't it? So the question is, how does, why, why does it say here the lesser light to rule the night? And I just thought it was an interesting phrase and an interesting choice of word for sure. The lesser light to rule the night. And then it reiterates that verse 18, to rule over the day and over the night. So I'm, uh, I'm one of those. I don't believe that there's anything, you know, anything random in Scripture. And this one specifically really spoke to me because I, I think there's a deeper spiritual principle here. And... Just to give you guys another example of this and kind of a confirmation of this in the New Testament is in um, in John. There's a in John chapter one. There's a phrase talking about Jesus Christ. I'm just going to turn to it really quickly. Um, yeah, John chapter one verse five. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's another interesting thing. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome that. You know, that's that's so awesome for me to, to realize that light rules even over the darkness. That's a huge spiritual thing. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. So I think uh, many of us is uh, many of us encounter different kinds of darkness. Um, in, uh, you know, perhaps in our thoughts, in our isolation, or just with everything happening right now, I think the enemy wants us to go to this, to see everything that's happening around us and to be overwhelmed by it, to be overcome by it, right? He wants us to be crushed by that. But this very, very simple principle, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. The lesser light to rule the night. Think about that. Every time you look at the moon, the, the moon, the light that rules the night. And that's, a, that's an awesome thing that God left for us in Scripture. And be encouraged with that, that our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who's in charge of everything. He's the one sovereign. And it's an interesting thing. Darkness exists. We, we are surrounded by darkness, but light rules the darkness. The lesser light rules the night. And um, the, I, I think the perfect example of this in the life of Jesus Christ was when Jesus is about to go to the cross and uh, he's having the Last Supper and then he, he has communion with his disciples. And there's a, there's a phrase in there where when Judas leaves, there's one little sentence in there. It says, and it was night. And that's another thing that caught my attention. And I thought, wow, and it was night. Again, an interesting note, maybe maybe I'm stretching it, but to think of it, 
humanity is about to kill their God and crucify Him. They're about to hang Him on a tree. This is the darkest place. This is the darkest point of our humanity. And, and, I, and I started thinking about it. Wow, Jesus Christ is about to be beaten, mocked, ridiculed, and in unjustly um, prosecuted and hung on a tree, nailed. And humanity is going to murder God. This was the darkest place in history. And then we see how Jesus goes through that experience. It's not something that catches him off guard. He walks into that knowingly. He walks into the garden knowingly. When the soldiers come at him, they're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He says, it is I, right? He's, he's in charge. He's ruling the situation when he's standing before Pilate. Um, and, and Pilate feels like he's, he's the one with the badge. He's the one with the title here. But Jesus Christ is fully in control of the situation. It throws Pilate off guard. He's like, don't you understand? I have the power here. I'm the one in charge over your life. I can kill you or, you know, uh, save you. And, and Jesus Christ says, you don't know, like, the power you have, you've been given it. And it shakes him up, right? Pilate, Pilate seems a little shooken up by that because Jesus is in full control even there. And all the way through, all the way through the cross, Jesus Christ is in full control and he's in charge of that, even though this was the darkest time. So um, I, I think this is such a beautiful principle. And I, I've been encouraged by this so many times. And I hope you guys can be encouraged with this, that whatever the darkness you're facing, there's, there's a light. You know, there's a light of Christ. Christ says, I am the light of the world. Whoever comes to me will not walk in darkness. So Jesus is that light of the world that shines in the darkness. So be encouraged with that. Cling to Christ and let's, uh, let's keep going. Amen.